It's always a pleasure to visit Berlin and Germany, and it's very important to exchange views on timely topics at the international level. The theme of this year's conference is forever timely. Building bridges between nations requires constant work, even though circumstances in today's world of fast communications, the internet and mobile phones are now better than they were just a short while ago. The essential condition for peaceful coexistence is the implementation of human rights, the rule of law and democracy in each country. Equality in education and citizen skills have crucial significance in this regard. In my remarks, I plan to shed light on the significance of education and opportunities to participate for national development. And they do have real significance. One of the key millennium development goals that we approved in year 2000 was to ensure primary schooling for children around the world. Gender equality goes hand in hand with this requirement. Education and gender equality are key elements in the Finnish development policy. We all know that education, in fact, promotes the achieve achievement of all the Millennium Development Goals. Ensuring every child access to education helps reduce poverty and lower child mortality. It also increases the population's knowledge concerning the state of the environment. Educating girls, in particular, has far-reaching effects within a society. It promotes families' welfare and helps stimulate prosperity. It is also a key element of development cooperation and helps increase social peace. Not to mention its key role in re reducing child marriages. Without girls' education, societies can only run at half power. It's wonderful that this course has been taken up by outstanding international role models. In a class by herself is Malala Yousafzai, the Pashtun girl from Mingora. We all know her rather sad, sad story with rather happy ending and respect her for taking part in global work on behalf of equal education and equality in general. Her statement that these kids don't need iPhones, Xbox, PlayStation, or chocolate. They want a book and a pencil. Makes it perfectly clear what the real issue is about. Understanding the advantages of gender equality in education does not have to rely on practical example alone. Incontestable proof is backed up by extensive research. The results show that a country's prosperity is directly dependent on the amount of schooling citizens receive. In other words, the more years spent in school, the higher a country's GDP. For example, in countries with a low GDP, eight to 12 years of schooling is generally the maximum, while in countries with a high GDP, this amount of schooling is the minimum level. The advantages of gender equality in education can also be demonstrated. Research is needed because the importance of girls' education does not seem to be recognized as clearly by everyone around the world as education's general significance for a society's success. A study of 100 countries that was conducted for the World Bank nevertheless showed that the 1%, only 1% 1 increase in women's secondary education increases GDP by 0.3%. It has also been observed that each year of schooling increases women's income by 10 to 20%. In the developing world, girls' possibilities to influence their home economies are therefore enormous. Education can be increased by reducing the costs to parents and recruiting more women teachers. Low-income families especially benefit from girls' education. For example, providing free school books in primary education has been found to increase girls' school attendance by 30%, and this change was not observed among boys. Ladies and gentlemen, 
research findings show quite clear, clearly the positive significance of education and particularly equal education opportunities for a country's development. So it's no wonder that in recent years, people in many industrialized countries have closely followed the publication of the latest PISA results. These results assess 15-year-old pupils' performance in reading, mathematics and science, and can also be used to evaluate the efficiency and effectiveness of different countries' education systems. PISA has received a lot of media attention in the countries that participate in the program. Large headlines and broad coverage around this theme indicate that everyone understands that the society's development depends strongly on skills and knowledge. Young people with proper training and education are a key resource for any nation. What has received less attention in the media is the fact that only 65 countries participated in the study. These were countries in which the basics of education are in order. Meanwhile, over 70% of countries they made outside the comparison. In many of these, access to education, not to mention the level of education, is way below what we find in the PISA countries. I think that it would be good sometimes for us to spend as much energy considering the level of education in the, in the countries that are not included in the study, along with remedial measures. In many developing countries, almost all boys and girls already start primary school, but many of them, especially girls, drop out of school. Furthermore, children with disabilities of, or special needs, as well as children of ethnic and linguistic minorities, and those living in conflict zones still often remain without an adequate education. In partnership with civil society organizations, Finland has created exemplary practices for the social inclusion of persons with disabilities and will continue to su support special needs education. There's room for improvement in the quality of education in developing countries at all levels of education the number of learners who complete primary education has increased tremendously in many countries, but access to high quality secondary education is available only for a small proportion of those seeking entry. Developing countries need support for the development of their education systems to provide education for the growing number of young people, and in addition, raising the quality of technical education and vocational training as well as higher education and research, is an important development target that can be supported by networking uh, with, for example, Finnish know-how. When planning education, it's important to ensure that it produces skilled labor for the market or creates the preconditions for independent entrepreneurship. Finland promotes human development by supporting the attainment of global education and health goals it goes in cooperation with other like-minded countries at various for advancing the rights of children and young people, particularly the girls, to education from early childhood development all the way up to higher education, promoting employment especially of young people, building the capacity of educational institution, promoting children's right to childhood and education. In particular, by combating the worst forms of, forms of child labor and child, la child labor that prevents education, encouraging the inclusion of health and well-being into all decision making. When we are reformulating the Millennium Development Goals, we have to bear in mind that what comes to education, we haven't, have not yet reached the goal, but in addition, we should look at the secondary ed education as the next uh, target and be sure that a bigger amount of young people get also the secondary education all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, equal access to education is easiest to promote in countries where basic living conditions are satisfactory and progress has been made on the road to democracy. The greatest challenges are in fragile states which have multiple problems and are plagued by armed conflicts, ineffective forms of democracy, 
poor administration, corruption, economic instability, and lack of respect for human rights and freedom of expression. We could count about 50 countries with a total of over 1.5 billion people which fall in this category today. One key point of departure in Finland's development policy is to draw attention to fragile countries in which the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals has been most challenging. Influencing their development requires a multi-pronged approach and long-term commitment to peace building, development aid and other cooperation. The objective in these countries should be the implementation of the principle of equal education and the realization that both genders are needed to develop a balanced society as one of the basic building blo blocks for a fra fragile country. Concretely, this objective can be achieved by implementing UN Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security. This re resolution placed women's issues on the Security Council's agenda for the first time. It also recognized that there is a better chance of achieving lasting peace if women and men have equal opportunities to participate in planning and carrying out decisions. This also promotes social stability and development. The action plan has been an important tool in stimulating interest in women's role and participation in peace and security issues, both nationally and internationally. And the essential thing to make sure the resolution is implemented, however, this requires the drafting of national action plans, and so far only 43 of the UN's 193 members have drafted their own action plan. Many international organizations, such as the EU and NATO, have also cited the resolution in their own objectives. In 2008, Finland published its first national action plan to implement the resolution, and this was followed by a new action plan for 2012 to 2016 that strengthened the monitoring of objectives with the help of indicators. Although international measures to promote resolution 1325 have been increased. Achieving objectives in practice is still a timely challenge. With the focusing of international attention and new tools on sexual violence in conflicts, as well as protection issues and impunity, women's participation in conflict prevention, peace processes, official peace negotiations, and high-level decision-making forums has fallen short of objectives. In peace negotiations in recent years, the UN estimates less than 8% of negotiators and less than 3% of people signing peace agreements have been women. Women's participation in peace negotiations should be encouraged, and it is important to see women as actors and not victims. This is despite the fact that, in terms of attitudes, including women in peace processes, meets more opposition than when it comes to matters related to sexual violence. This is so clear, concrete, and widespread in conflicts that it is much more difficult to oppose than including women in decision-making. Building peace requires the whole population. Likewise, better results can be achieved in the negotiation process if both, both genders participate. Ladies and gentlemen, a society cannot succeed unless all citizens are welcome to participate in its development. The continuing objective of the international community is to help create proper conditions so that this is possible around the world. We should be able to offer everyone's opportunities, everyone opportunities not only for life's basic needs, such as food, but also for security and human rights. This kind of world can only be achieved through education and equality. Sadly, their significance for everyone still has to be justified to, an, to, uh, uh, to a great extent, but I believe that long-term work will yield results. We must untiringly strive to achieve the key Millennium Development Goals and also reformulate them to answer new challenges better. Thank you for your attention.